Barcello at the Cryptozoology Paranormal Museum. Uh, happy Halloween! It is October 31st. Uh, we've been uh, very busy here at the museum, ghost hunts, traveling. We've got a lot going on the next month or so, and we'll keep you in touch. Today I want to do a little video talking about something I wanted to touch on this month, if I could. Uh, the Patterson Gimlin film, uh, which was in uh, originally... October 20th, 1967, so I kind of wanted to do kind of an October theme thing on that, which has been a major thing for cryptozoology, obviously. The Bigfoot sightings were around, or the Sasquatch, or Yeti, whatever you want to refer to them as in different areas, y Yaren, uh, Skunk Ape, been around for long before 1967, but they kind of, the thing that really broke into the news and I think the Bigfoot uh, was coined at that point, some news person referring to the big castings. Uh, a lot of fakery came out of that too. Uh, a lot of questions on the film itself up to uh, how legit it is. Uh, I'd be honest with you, as a kid growing up seeing the uh, film, I, I kind of questioned it and stuff. But as I've gotten older and gotten more into the uh, cryptozoology, paranormal ufology and all this sort of stuff, uh, the technology we've got today, it would have been so hard back then to fake it. Uh, a lot of issues there. A lot of people have come forward and claimed to have been the guy in the monkey suit. Uh, there's even a guy out of North Carolina that claims to have made the suit. And he's got his photos, which I'll try to find one online, where he's holding this. Literally, it's a monkey costume. It looks nothing like the thing you see on there. You can see muscles ripple through it, which would be hard with a quality suit today. I mean... You'd have to have, you know, experts making it. Uh, even today, most of the stuff CGI because it's just, you know, it's too hard to make costumes look real. It's just easier to just have, to have them computer generated. Uh, a, lot, a lot of interesting things there. The way the foot lifts at a right angle, uh, which is I find just amazing, and how flat foot it is. I mean, try to walk like that. Try to go out there and try to mimic. The creature in that, the uh, or if you think it's a person, just try to do that walk for a period. And then I love the iconic spin when it turns, uh, that which has kind of been now commercialized and used by pretty much everything in us. And I've used it on my my political sign. Actually, <laughs> Bigfoot says vote for Steve Barcelo. Uh, so I mean, it's become such a part of Americana. And uh, people like for our museum, people come in from other countries. And they love the paranormal, the UFO, but the Bigfoot, the Bigfoot, the Sasquatch. They want to see that. They want. To, they want to see the prints. Uh, they want to see the evidence, the uh, uh, thermal images that we've actually been lucky enough to capture. Uh, they'll see the interviews and the stories that we've gotten from people over the uh, last what seven, eight years we've been doing this now. It's just amazing. I mean, uh, this is obviously something there. If you would have asked me ten years ago. Uh, anything about Bigfoot. I have done documentary on it and stuff, working for the New York Daily News. But I would have said, you know, ah, feeders of opportunity, nocturnal, kind of, you know, not 100%. If I, all the stories I've heard were back in the 70s and 60s and stuff. And then I come to an area like Littleton, North Carolina, where we've got sightings that are literally fresh. I mean, some no more than months old. Uh, multiple sightings within the last five years that I've actually been able to interview people who were not even Bigfoot people, had no interest in, they weren't looking for this. This is not what they were looking for. Putting out garbage, driving down the road, hearing a noise in the backyard, looking out, things like that. But, but anyway, getting back to this, uh, this film that kind of started a lot of it and got a lot of us interested, and uh, I, I think it's very impressive. I'm going to play some of the videos in here. Uh, they have some nice stuff now with the uh, technology where they can actually bring things in. Now, uh, Bob Gimlin's still around. I'm gonna. I would love to see if I can do an interview with him. See if we can get him to come to one of our events now that we're coming back to the real world out of COVID. Uh, Roger um, unfortunately died in 1972 of cancer, but right to the end he said uh, he, it's it was real. He you know, he never wavered from it. Nor has Bob. Uh, it was an early afternoon. They were on horseback in Bluff Creek. 
Uh, that's where the whole thing took place. Now, a lot of people that go there claim that they've you know, been to the area. Apparently, it's, I've never been there. I'd like to go at some point. Apparently, it's quite a ways in. It's not like you can just park your car and wander in. You need to get in, either really be a serious hiker, or you have to be on horseback and be, you know, it's not, not an easy thing to do, just to, you know. There's no tour bus dropping you off at the side of the road to take photos at the site. Uh, like I said, one of the things I'm impressed with is the, the foot motion. Uh, just the leg motion, that. that the fact that it has pendulum breasts. I mean, why would you go through the hassle to create something and put boobs on it? I mean, what the heck's the point of that? I mean, that's so much more difficult. Not to mention, you think if you are trying to fake it, to try to get some big, big old guy to go out and say, "Listen, well, we want you to dress like a, a female monkey and wander around the woods." I mean, it can be a little bit harder to get someone to want to do that. But uh, uh, there was a lot of stuff too, like just the fact that. Uh, uh, you know, the, the way the arch looks, the way the foot kind of lifts. If you look at the videos now that they've cleaned up, the foot kind of looks flexible, much more flexible than like a human foot is. We just kind of, if you watch us, we walk, we tend to hop. This thing does, and it kind of glides. And that's kind of what we've gotten with the thermal hits here. Very similar motion, uh, which makes it just, you know, now that I've gotten more into it and seen these things and heard stories, it just kind of makes too much sense. Uh... Just a, a lot of things there. You know, obviously the muscle structure through the, uh, seeing it through the costume, trying to keep something like that, that taut. I mean, it's not like they had, you know, they invented spandex at that point or <laughs> with fur on it. It's just too many things just don't, it's, it's just enough with a film is edgy enough being 16 millimeter and just the clarity and the graininess where you can't quite see that little bit. Just like the, a lot of the stuff, even the flare images we get, you know, the, the equipment's getting better and better. But it's, it's not quite sharp enough. And then when it gets too sharp, someone gets, sends in a really good, clean photo, and there's a very few of them out there, uh, right away then it's, you know, it's CGI. You know, so you, damned if you do, damned if you don't. Uh, but this thing, I mean, it's it's... Over the years, it just looks good. Uh, you know, they've got you could we can put it in slow motion and show you stuff, uh, but it's a lot of crazy, crazy stuff out there. But like in the in the piece I'm going to try to play, check out the foot motion, check out the way it rotates. Uh, I mean, just look at it over and over again. Uh, put your comments below. Tell us what you think. We love to see it. I'll do another film on this. I want to do it with the guys in here. Get a group together. Uh, but, you know, Bigfoot, Sasquatch, whatever you want to call it, uh, uh, the, the substrate there, that was a sandy uh, sandbar, apparently. It's like an area water runs through. I believe there was even a lot of tree and stuff, the trees that were washed in there from flooding previous. So that probably would have been a great place, to, you know, like even some of the prints you see. Now, I don't have any copies of their prints, but I, I'll show you some photos they're holding, which look decent. Actually, they look almost too clean. I mean, they're kind of a little bit too pristine, but the fact it's on a sandbar, that makes sense. You know, if you're in a sandy area, you're going to get much, much cleaner prints if you're there right away or, or soon. Uh, the area I'm in here, uh, the substrate here is clay. So the conditions have to be right. I mean, you could drive your car over an area that's clay here and barely leave a mark. So it has to, the soil has to be wet for quite a while. And then once the print is uh, pressed into the clay, if we are good enough to find them and come out there, it's a pain in the ass to dig out once you pour them. But we'll get a, a much better print, too. But conditions have to write sand. It's easy to leave a print. I mean, even we will leave prints in the sand at our weight. And, uh, but, yeah, you know, they can be manipulated easier. Uh, they can uh, be destroyed easier. I mean, just wind, anything. It doesn't take much to destroy it. So. But if you do get a clean one out there, you, they, they will look sharper. They tend to look sharper if you can get one out there. And the conditions are right. Switch the, the sand's just a bit damp and stuff, obviously. Uh, especially anyone who's made reproduction prints. You're trying to make a copy of a print you found. You know, if you use a sand bed, it takes a while to get it down. But if you get conditions right, you can almost do you know, ac very accurate looking prints. Uh, anyway, so I just want to go through the film, show some stuff here, and then uh, uh, we'll talk about uh, some of the stuff that's happened. Uh, at a later film, and I just wanted to reach out. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Support uh, the museum, our channel, and uh, the guys so we can get out there and do stuff. I mean, you know, obviously buying all these thermal scopes and stuff, you know, get, they add up to us, so if you can help uh, by subscribing on the channel, that, you know, we get a little bit of, very little bit of money back from YouTube, but it's something that comes back in. So, uh, 
Uh, thanks for watching. Check out the video. I'll be talking to you soon. And everyone be good to each other. It's, uh, it's important these days. Take care.